how come nobody, nobody told me before? I mean, my family, my neighbors, my friends, my people, nobody knows, nobody tells us. The best kept secret among the Jewish people. I was born to a uh, Sephardic Jewish family. Uh, my family are Babylonian Jews on my mom's side and uh, Sephardic Jews uh, from Spain on my dad's side. My mom would try to drag my brothers and me to synagogue. Maybe it had something to do with our people thousands of years ago. But God was very, very far away. In school, we would study the Old Testament from first grade to 12th grade. We study it as history of our people, as wisdom literature, um, something that one just needs to know being Jewish, but not as the Word of God. After my military service, like a lot of Israelis, I decided to travel the world. Initially in Southeast Asia, a lot of Israelis are going there for the mysticism trail and the uh, drug trail. I wanted to understand what they believe, and so I was exposed to some Hindu and some Buddhist literature. I got to to realize that there is a spiritual reality. But that spiritual reality I saw was very, very scary. It was negative, it was dark, but it was very real. I ended up in Amsterdam, Holland. And I came there with merchandise to sell because I ran out of money. It was there that I've met a group of very enthusiastic young believers in Jesus. And I said, uh, well, I'm Jewish and we don't believe in Jesus. And they said, why? Jesus is Jewish. And I said, I'm not sure why, but I'm sure we don't believe in Jesus. As I got to know them, I noticed two things that really drew my attention and made me curious. One was what they called personal relationship with God. I couldn't understand it. I mean, I could see it. I could see how it works out in their lives. They would pray for one another. They would talk to God like one talks to a friend. Um, it's very foreign to a Jewish mindset. So this friend said, well, would you like to pray? I said, I don't know how to pray. You know, in my bar mitzvah, they gave me a page, I read it. Uh, give me a page, I'll, I'll read it. And the second thing that was even more shocking than that was that some of them were familiar with passages in the Hebrew scriptures that I wasn't very well familiar with. In school, we would study certain chapters and we would skip over a lot of the, a lot of the other passages. But they referred me to passages that they called prophetic or messianic that talk about the Messiah. And I was amazed. I said, well, how come you guys know the, the Hebrew scripture? I mean, this is ours. And they said, no, it's, it's the whole Bible is one book. And I said, well, I, I have a Bible at home and I've never seen the New Testament. I decided to check it out. So I read the Hebrew scriptures, and I saw there was the same one as we had. I had one in Hebrew, and those passages were right in there, telling when the Messiah will be born, what will he do, how are we going to recognize him. Reading this, I became very curious, and I said to myself, I have to read the New Testament. So I actually got one in Hebrew, and every morning I would kind of look at it, and then look away, go about doing my things. Finally, I, I said to myself, well, Eris, you're a hypocrite because you would read Hindu writings and Buddhist writings and whatever, but when it comes to Jesus, you know, you avoid. And I started reading. I was very surprised. First of all, it took place in Israel, in places I've been to many, many times. Growing up in Israel, I've never ever heard anything about Jesus of Nazareth. I've never met a Christian person. I've never seen a New Testament. I had absolutely no idea what it meant. It is particularly ridiculous because I had first degree family living uh, on the shores of the Sea of Galilee. And throughout my childhood, we would visit them several times a year, swim, fish, but I had no idea that Jesus or his disciples, you know, ever existed. We refer to this phenomenon as Jesus being the best kept secret among the Jewish people. I, as I read about all the religious institutions, they're still very much with us among the Jewish people to this day. But Yeshua was different. I felt very drawn to him. He, he did not try to do things to win men's favor. And so I started a process of comparing the prophecies in the Hebrew scriptures about the Messiah and how we're going to recognize him and the fulfillment in Yeshua in the New Testament.
And to my amazement, it matched. I became convinced, first in my head, then in my heart, that Yeshua is indeed the promised Messiah of our people. Shortly after that, I started noticing changes in myself. I had a great hunger to read the Word of God, the Hebrew Scriptures, and the New Testament. So thinking that I'm the first Jewish person since the time of Paul the Apostle, whom I read about in the New Testament, I felt that God is calling me to go back to Israel and tell my family, tell my friends, tell my neighbors, my people, and everybody else that I meet about this great discovery that Yeshua is not just the Messiah of the Gentiles, He's also our Messiah. After becoming a follower of Yeshua, I became overwhelmed with a sense of joy on the one hand, but also urgency because I said, how come nobody, nobody told me before? I mean, my family, my neighbors, my friends, my people, nobody knows, nobody tells us. And I felt very strongly that I need to go and tell my people. I decided to surprise my family. My dad was there and I told them that I believe in Yeshua, the Messiah. The consensus was that in some way or fashion, I've lost my mind. My dad's family, they have uh, arranged for me a meeting with a chief psychiatrist in our city. And he actually formally declared me to be sane. I should have asked for that in writing. My mom's family arranged for me a meeting with a rabbi. And the rabbi promised my mom that he would prove to me that Yeshua is not the Messiah. The day before our meeting, the rabbi called my mom and he canceled the meeting. To my great joy, I discovered there were other believers. I discovered there was a congregation of Jewish believers and I started going there. And so I told them, I want to study the Word of God. Is there any Bible school or Bible college or something like that I can go and invest some time and just study the Bible. And they said, well, no, there's nothing. And I completed my doctoral studies in the United States. After that, with my wife and young children, we came back to Israel. I knew that God has called me to serve Him, but I didn't know exactly where. I remember very vividly how it felt coming to know Yeshua and having a deep desire to study the scriptures and not knowing how to do it. And I felt very strongly that I need to go and provide this opportunity for Israeli believers, both Jewish and Arab, to study the Word of God in Hebrew right where it happened. And to that, I dedicate my life.